truths are easy to understand once they are discovered. The point is to discover them. The laws of nature are written by the hand of God in the language of mathematics. I have never met a man so ignorant that I couldn't learn something from him. You can't teach anybody anything, only make them realize the answers are already inside them. Knowing yourself, that is the greatest wisdom. To understand the universe, you must understand the language in which it's written, the language of mathematics. In the sciences, the authority of thousands of opinions is not worth as much as one tiny spark of reason in an individual man. Two truths cannot contradict one another. By denying scientific principles, one may maintain any paradox. To be humane, we must ever be ready to pronounce that wise, ingenious and modest statement, I do not know. Where the senses fail us, reason must step in. The prohibition of science would be contrary to the Bible, which in hundreds of places teaches us how the greatness and the glory of God shine forth marvelously in all his works, and is to be read above all in the open book of the heavens. Measure what can be measured, and make measurable what cannot be measured. See now the power of truth. I do not feel obliged to believe that the same God who has endowed us with senses, reason and intellect has intended us to forego their use. Nature is relentless and unchangeable, and it is indifferent as to whether its hidden reasons and actions are understandable to man or not. Wine is sunlight held together by water. Facts which at first seem improbable will, even on scant explanation, drop the cloak which has hidden them and stand forth in naked and simple beauty. Nothing can be taught to a man, only it's possibly to help him to discover it inside. There are those who reason well, but they are greatly outnumbered by those who reason badly. Who would dare assert that we know all there is to be known? I am inclined to think that the authority of Holy Scripture is intended to convince men of those truths which are necessary for their salvation, which being far above man's understanding, cannot be made credible by any learning or any other means than revelation by the Holy Spirit. The Milky Way is nothing else but a mass of innumerable stars planted together in clusters. Scripture is a book about going to heaven. It's not a book about how the heavens go. Showing a greater fondness for their own opinions than for truth, they sought to deny and disprove the new things which, if they had cared to look for themselves, their own senses would have demonstrated to them. Science proceeds more by what it has learned to ignore than what it takes into account. I think that in the discussion of natural problems, we ought to begin not with the scriptures, but with experiments and demonstrations. It is surely harmful to souls to make it a heresy to believe what is proved. Nature is inexorable and immutable. She never transgresses the laws imposed upon her, nor cares a whit whether her abstruse reasons and methods of operations are understandable to men. 
it is a beautiful and delightful sight to behold the body of the moon. Nothing occurs contrary to nature except the impossible, and that never occurs. I would beg the wise and learned fathers of the Church to consider with all diligence the difference which exists between matters of mere opinion and matters of demonstration. Mathematics is the key and door to the sciences. The greatest wisdom is to get to know oneself. If experiments are performed thousands of times at all seasons and in every place without once producing the effects mentioned by your philosophers, poets and historians, this will mean nothing and we must believe their words rather than our own eyes. The Book of Nature is written in the language of mathematics. Being infinitely amazed, so do I give thanks to God, who has been pleased to make me the first observer of marvelous things unrevealed to bygone ages. See now the power of truth, the same experiment which at first glance seemed to show one thing when more carefully examined, assures us of the contrary. You cannot teach a person something he does not already know. You can only bring what he does know to his awareness. But let us remember that we are dealing with infinities and indivisibles, both of which transcend our finite understanding, the former on account of their magnitude, the latter because of their smallness. In my studies of astronomy and philosophy, I hold this opinion about the universe, that the sun remains fixed in the center of the circle of heavenly bodies without changing its place, and the earth, turning upon itself, moves round the sun. Thought-provoking quotes have the power to inspire us. Which quote from the video resonated with you the most? Let me know in the comments below.